Well, good morning and welcome to a brand new week. After yes, what so. must have been a restful weekend for most of us, hey, we're expecting that you're prime and ready for a brand new week. Mondays are mostly busy, but we're sure that we can help you set it off, right? Absolutely. And that's why you've joined us for a Monday dose of happiness, a dose of information, and of course, some entertainment. Absolutely, people. We hit the ground running with endless possibilities ahead of us. Thank God it's Monday is what we like to say on a Monday. TGIM. Exactly. Time <laughs> okay. to take charge of your goals and dreams and mm. get on to it, shall you? Mm. Should we? And should. sometimes you should just maybe let go of some of the opportunities that you might have missed along the way. Just let it go. Divine delays, you know what they say. A good thing is yeah, there's another chance. There's Absolutely. always another week um, right around the corner. So get up and go get it. Absolutely. So no matter how challenging last week might have been for you guys, hey, we're here to kickstart your Monday with an explosion of inspiration. So hey, get up and go get it already, like she said from before. <laughs> we're undefeated champions. That's that, right? what we are. Say it again. Undefeated. People at the back. Yes, sir. Undefeated. Wake up, Nigeria. Absolutely. Eh? Speaking of undefeated, mm -hmm. oh, goodness me. Um, so I, I was actually having a conversation with someone okay. uh, not too long ago, and they were like, okay, so how are you guys doing it? Like, wake up, Nigeria, how are you doing it? That every other breakfast show has, like, sort of, like, given up along the way. Oh, wow. Hey, you hear that? it's called dedication. <laughs> this is our life, and we love it. People don't like getting up in the morning. I absolutely live for that moment mm. of solitude when I'm up and nobody else is. And he's not even jonesing. No. He's not even lying because he gets here before everybody. I, I, still, don't, I still don't understand. Two hours of silence and solitude is all you need to absolutely kickstart your day. Yeah. It gives you that time to introspect and think about what to do to make sure that everything is right in the right place. So the person trying to inspire you this morning, his name is Mazino Appeal. And the person trying to inspire, the person trying to inspire you is Eli <laughs> Oisa. Hey! <laughs> Remember, you have a hashtag you can use, Wake Up Nigeria on TVC across all social media platforms. We'd love to hear from you so you can be part of this journey. And please tune in throughout all the mobile apps and devices that you can. It's available for do download. That's our app on iOS and on Google Play Store. Yeah. So we have quite a wide audience, everyone. A few million people watching us every morning on GoTV Channel 16 or UHF Channel 49, mm -hmm. brightening up your Monday morning. And of course, you can connect with us on social media all through the entire day at TVC Connect, all through the social media platform. So yeah. please make sure that you're bringing us that joy and positivity that Mondays are not really known for. <laughs> but you know what I mean. You have to bring it. <laughs> Let's tell them what we're doing today. It's all about Monday motivation. Uh, we're trying to bring on people that can help you feel inspired, empowered, mm. help you rise and shine. And we will be having quite a bit of course, for a musical performance, Barry Koy Emanuel is known as Shop Boy. He's one of Nigeria's fast rising artists. And hey, he's uh, one of the next industry greats. We're going to be having a performance from him very soon. And then joining us to talk about branding in the gig economy and share insights on how personal branding can be leveraged on in this gig oriented economy is Isaiah Itwa. Motivational speaking and branding expert. And then for SME, we'll be having a sit down with Jumoke Edung, a fashion expert and footwear connoisseur. We'll be hearing about her story and her business on SME. So let's do Monday, shall we? Yes, indeed. indeed. Let's do Monday, not mm. without your regular gossips from over the weekend. One of you well, were talking about something the other time. Mm. Sorry, I called it gossip. That's Go really. That's very wrong, Mazino. Mazino. Why? I've, I've, I've done reprimanding myself. So. <laughs> do you know? I'm just wondering how many times in your marriage you had to sleep in the doghouse. Oh, Ooh. personally? Yes, yeah, ah. because this is your mouth. When you ah. when you work in media, you you have to have a well prepared doghouse. <laughs> Don't wow. I know it? <laughs> because you're coming back home, and then you just open the door, and then there's a scowl looking see, at you. See, like, there's already one. See, don't just worry. look at this. Well, is that, that makeup? Well, this no, is really? Me. From this morning. What? Me. How? Maybe you nice need to point it out on camera. Now, thank you very much, Mary. Please, uh, please no. uh, 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 James, who is the security guy, please yeah. help me arrange that doghouse. I have a home to go to. <laughs> Thinking know, about homes, you uh -huh. guys were talking this morning about in laws mm. um, getting yeah. comfortable uh -huh. in their wives' parents' house mm. or homes. Oh. And uh, what was that again you guys were... It, it, it was actually... I thought that was what we were going to be talking about. No, no, no. We're oh. talking about uh, the, the, the pregnant lady. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, okay. So now, when it comes to 
where you live. Around this time of year, everybody's thinking about rent mm -hmm. and with the economy, everything going haywire. Everybody's wondering, you know, what next? So you're wondering why isn't it more common for men to swallow their pride and mm. just move into somewhere that's available, mm. okay. even if mm. it is your mother-in-law's house. That's the house of your wife's Parents. mother. Wife's mother I or wife's parents. Darren already yeah. mentioned the word there. You said swallow your pride. Pride, yeah. take that out. Pride. There's a certain level of pride that is necessary as a man. Okay. There's something about getting complacent in a very comfortable environment. If you say, mm. oh, at times are hard. It can happen and it does happen. You can stay, but you can't get comfortable. You can't stay for too long. You mm -hmm. must eventually say, you know what? You can stay here. It's your mother's house or your father's house. Anyway, yeah. I'm going to go out there, try and hustle and put this family back on the road. That's okay. what I expect from any responsible man. But so personally, yeah. I, I see no problems with it. I see mm. no problems with a man being too comfortable. I see no problem with a man taking advantage of the situation. Because as far as I'm concerned, mm. marriage is about complementing each other. Some men are hardworking, some are just laid back. Mm. Some women are hardworking, some are just laid back. So if a laid back person marries a laid back person, no, 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 no. Wow. if a hardworking person marries a hardworking person, good for you. But if a hardworking woman marries a laid back man, if she cannot take it, then they, they just need to fix um, themselves or something. Because listen, he will. it might be good in every area except provision. Wow. You know what? That's his main job. This might be... This, I do not believe in all this. We might have roles. to convey this into another segment because I think there's so much to unpack. But welcome to the start of Wake, uh, Wake Up Nigeria for a Monday edition. Welcome once again. It's time for the news inside of Wake Up Nigeria. My name is Mazino Peel. Now we begin in Borno State where at least three civilians and one soldier have been killed following the ambush of an escort convoy on Goza Limankara Road by some suspected Boko Haram terrorists. According to reports, the terrorists also set ablaze five commercial vehicles, including a security patrol vehicle. The Nigerian army is yet to comment on this development, but locals confirmed that the attack took place on Saturday morning. More than 40,000 persons have been killed since the Boko Haram insurgency surfaced in 2009. Now, President Bola Tinubu has directed security agencies to rescue the remaining female students who were kidnapped from the Federal University Gasal in Zamfara State in a statement by the media aide to the president, Ajuri Ngalali. President Tinubu says there is no moral justification for such heinous act against innocent victims whose only offense was their pursuit of quality education. The president also showed that no effort will be spared in ensuring, that safe, uh, in ensuring their safe return. He pledged that the government will ensure that educational institutions remain structured as uh, a sanctuary of knowledge and freedom uh, from the menacing act of terrorists. And more efforts are being put in place to rid the country of kidnappers and other criminals. Taraba State is one of the northeast states affected by activities of kidnappers and Governor Kefas Abu wants security chiefs to redouble their efforts. Uh, this follows the recent arrest of 20 kidnapped suspects. Olabi Adenusi filed this report. It had gotten to a stage that residents of Jalingo, the Taraba state capital, could no longer sleep easy due to an alarming increase in cases of kidnapping. There was no week that a case of kidnapping will not be reported. The high rate of kidnapping in Taraba state uh, is very, very worrisome and uh, the way we target is as a, as a result of uh, foreigners intruding to Taraba State, most especially those from Borno, Zamfara, Yobi, Kano. But there may be a change in this tide with the police now working hard to fish out criminals hibernating in some identified hot spots within the state. Residents are advised to always give police useful information in the ongoing war against kidnapping. A team of, a team of operative attached to the state intelligence uh, bureau, SRB, arrested the following suspects. One, Ibrahim Babangida male, 35 years old, of Halapucha village, Tongo local government, Adama state, and Sani Mohammed, 25 years old, of Bukhari local government, Travel state. Suspects have confessed it that they are among the terrorizing group that have been terrorizing uh, Mayo Dasa community of Jalingo local government, 
Karaba State. Meanwhile, Ibrahim Bambangida says that they were involved in many kidnappings that took place within Jalingo and Evarot. Make me, I'm here today. I involve myself on kidnapping matters. And God intervened on the kidnapping with no succeed, with no kid, the boy, with no collect the ransom. On the process of collecting the ransom from the family of the boy, we have been arrested. Meanwhile, Governor Kefas Agbu has urged security chiefs in the state to redouble their efforts to cop the activities of kidnappers. The governor, after a meeting with the security chiefs, assures the residents of adequate protection. So that everybody who understand the challenges that we have right now and what is ahead of us in the future and the need for us to collaborate and work together. The governor visited the offices of DSS, CIS Brigade Headquarters of the Nigerian Army, State Police Command, NDLEA, FRSC, the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, the Immigration, and the Nigerian Correctional Service to boost the fight against crime. Now, following the expiration of the 21-day ultimatum, the Nigeria Labour Congress is set to hold an emergency National Executive Council meeting on Tuesday tomorrow. The NLC had earlier embarked on a two-day warning strike to protest the plight and sufferings of Nigerians following the removal of petrol subsidy. After the warning strike, the Labour Union gave the government a 21-day ultimatum to meet its demands. The Monday meeting between the federal government and the Nigeria Labour Congress to avert an imminent strike ended in a deadlock as the union insisted on its demands. And that's it for the news and, uh, here on Wake Up Nigeria. Do stay tuned. We've got more on the other side. Okay. Morning. Welcome yeah. once again. It's a Monday, isn't it? It is. Mm -hmm. Loads to talk about from over the weekend, but uh, there was something we started discussing a little earlier on. And I was, I was actually surprised by the interest many men had in it. And mm. some men, you know, they saw it, they're like, oh, what kind of man is that? And then they moved on. What are we mm. talking about exactly? Which one now? Is it the lady? Lady? Yes, uh, now. Oh, Why not the one I said you You were even the one insisting on us talking about it. <laughs> yeah, I was, just, I, was just, I was trying to help out the viewers here, but yeah. you, you want to just keep going. <laughs> no, so, what's the story, though? Okay, so, okay, you, you tell us. No, so um, from what I gathered, um, just off the surface of the, you know, the headline, it said that there was a, a lady who had to drive all the way to, I think, Aja mm -hmm. to go and pick no, up it her wasn't friend. In, it was in Abuja. Oh, in Abuja. But that kind of distance of, say, going from oh, the Oh, okay. To I get you. Okay. Yeah. In order to pick up her friend who was, who in, was labor. in labor. Yeah. Why did she need to pick her up? Obviously, to take her to the hospital. Mm -hmm. But then it was because apparently she and her husband had had a row of some sort. I'm just a and little then, confused. You know, she's having their baby and uh, because they're quarreling, you know, so he didn't she respond. had to call someone else to... Did he not respond? Did he try? Did she so try we do not have details him? as yeah. to whether he tried to Two reach things. out. We if do she not try to reach out to him and he did not respond. Then that's a very irresponsible husband. If she did not try to reach out to him at all, then that's a very irresponsible wife. Hmm. Because I agree, actually. There, there is some, see the, having a the, child. The most basic thing in any relationship, whether it's an office relationship or the institution of marriage, is one very simple. Uh, factor, which is actually a nuance, quite frankly. Yeah. It's simply just communication. Mm -hmm. From communication, you get trust, loyalty, affection, empathy, and all the rest. But people fail to realize that communication is that big a deal, even if it seems like the most basic thing in any relationship. I can't imagine why, first off, she needs a friend who lives all the way, let's say Cairo, yeah. she lives in Otaku, that you need a friend to drive all the way from Cairo to Otaku just because you don't even have... Are you that bad a person that your neighbors can't even offer to help you and take you Wait, to calm down. Like, a the the neighborliness ah, of, in, 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 yes. in this day and age, neighborliness has changed. It's not like before. Mm -hmm. Not everybody knows the people that live on their street. Mm -hmm. not, even, not even everybody knows people that live in their estate. That's a problem. Uh, it is people a problem. People have been mourning recently so, about most of their friends relocating. Exactly. So maybe the ones around aren't Like, I don't... I, I, I think I can count on probably... One hand, how many people I could call in the vicinity of uh, where we live, for instance. Okay, see. And that's, that's not, I don't believe you could blame the individual for that. I think it's just the way the society is just changing oh, no, and evolving. I blame the individual, I blame myself for, mm. for not having more than two people 
proximate to me that I can call on if I need something, if I was in dire straits. Okay, if, some would be on your payroll, yes, for instance. See, some would be on your payroll, like the security oh, no, guards, no, 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 or the no, estate no, security, see, hang on a or someone from... So let me, humanity yeah. is really going down the drain, and we need to prop it back up and help us help society. Because you can't, I can't imagine why I'd live in a compound and I don't speak with my neighbor. Even if it's a good morning, hey, hi, or something very casual as, hey, you came back the other day with so-and-so. I was wondering if we could have, for just pure pleasantry and just casual talk, you need yeah. it because one day will come. You'll be going somewhere for three days and you need somebody to feed your dog. Mm. Mm. It's simple. So I, the thing I, is, I, in most cases, not everybody is lucky with the neighbors. But since yeah. we're still talking about pregnancy and pregnancy-related issues, yeah. I remember something I, I saw. That's what I was just trying to find for you guys. So it was something someone wrote. The original poster said, my uncle told my aunt, pay me back the 20K I used to complete the hospital bills. Wow. It's not me who told you to deliver through CS. What? Wow. And there's all quoted it said, the woman that was beside me in the labor ward when I had my daughter kept shouting, Taiwo, that's her husband, please borrow me the money for the CS. I promise I'll give it back to you. Oh. She had been in labor since the day before. Oh. I met her there and I left her there. Wow. Wow. So these are, if we are talking about the man Nibbles. who abandoned, you know, who yeah. the wife couldn't call mm -hmm. for whatever reason, or maybe she called, yeah. he was like, I beg, leave me alone. Mm -hmm. There are other issues, women in labor, that mm -hmm. are being made to also suffer a lot of psychological things. And what many men don't realize is, what you do to a woman during that, during period. that period, she would never forget. Hey. She, she can forget so many things before, she can forget so many things after. She won't forget. But whatever she, a woman goes through mm -hmm. in labor, yeah. she would never forget. Yeah. Wow. And you she know, there, there's, there's just that, there's that um, state, mental state that the woman is in at that point. If, for instance, the first person she decides to call is someone else apart from you, it's something, you, there is a problem exactly. with that relationship, one. Two, but the thing is, she's still thinking in the best interest of that child and herself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think it's a, a, a malicious thing or it's out of spite. I think it's because she believes that is the best, in the best interest of that baby and herself at that point Absolutely. in time. The person that will help her get through this yeah. without stress, without any more uh, pressure than she's already because, under. Exactly, because sometimes people forget yeah. that labor also requires you being mentally present. Yes, so. Mm -hmm. A woman who is not mentally present will not be able to push the right way, and, and that could cause problems. They're both they, not ready they, for they, babies. Probably well, not. You could, you probably could put not. it that way, but the, the baby person, is here. If the yeah. person whom, yeah. who's supposed to be that one person who's supposed to actually make that situation better yeah. is not your partner, then there is a big problem. Hey, but there are... To understand how no, but there are some partners... There are some partners yeah, that can't they're... handle it, though. <laughs> there are some men that can't handle it. They're the ones that faint in the labor room. They can't handle we've, we've heard labor. Of, they can, yes, there's, there's oh, some that... But they could handle nine months from before, huh? No, 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 but they could... <laughs> no, but I'm being serious. There are some men that actually... about that, yeah? And if you feel like your man can't handle it or he won't see you the same way... Eh, it might be another reason why she might make such a decision. Hmm. I'm just, this is just, this is not actually in the context of the before, story. Uh, Titi, you said yeah. that it might not be a case of malice. She's just yeah. looking for whoever is going to make that. Yes. I cannot remove malice from that situation. How? Unfortunately, because I mean. Even if it's your mom. Ah. Like, for instance, God no. forgive me, my mom, my mom is probably watching right now. She definitely. Is. I did not really want her to be in the room in at trouble. that point. <laughs> <laughs> because I understand how my, my mom's my mom takes over a space. Your mom would want to take over. She the would take for over. You. She would want to be you know Let on top of what space. every nurse is doing, what every doctor is doing. And I would I would rather the nurses and doctors be focused on me and not focused on trying to please my mom. Uh -huh. So so I know the person that I want in the room at that point in time. This is not that I don't love my mom, but I just know exactly who she is, and I'm like, eh, if mom is here right now, eh. She might be the one to tell them what you know, to do. You know what's funny? I, I, my, my mom's a nurse. So whenever I have any medical procedure, uh -huh. I feel safer when she's there. Mm. I, I, I've never really thought of how she feels about being there. Okay. As we were talking, I was just thinking about it. Is she happy to be there? Does mm -hmm. she wish she could be outside the room? But I always feel safer since childhood so when my mom is in the room. So you go into labor, your water breaks now. Yeah. And you have only five Naira credits. Wow. Who will you come call first, your husband or your mother? My husband. Uh, Five naira credit though. Definitely. Uh, and then he, guess what? For some me and my mom, I, I wouldn't this. call my mom. So he is likely to call yeah. my mom immediately. Like, yes. yeah, he would do that <laughs> immediately. So I will call my husband first. So, so the, the but, truth is, there's two ways about that. If my wife calls my mother, mm. I would actually appreciate. It. Uh, so. 
I'd actually appreciate Aww. it. <laughs> because we don't want to know anything about it. No, 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 no. Why? Really, as in, you know now, it, the, the, the best thing a man could ever wish for is for that relationship between your mother and your wife. And mm. if she decides to, mm, this one doesn't have the stomach, like you say, mm. to kick me aside and call my mother and mm. then... You know, if, if everything should just happen, my mother should just call me and say congratulations. So I would actually Can you imagine? That. Lisa. But I have a question for Titi. So well, what did Oscar say when he woke up from the, from the hospital floor after you had given birth? Wow, really? <laughs> he was, he had a camera in his hand throughout the whole process. I have a video of the whole process. So and it will never insides. see, it will never see the internet, but... He has seen your inside. He, he has seen Titi's what I look like inside. Her <laughs> inside, inside out. out. <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't faint. And he, uh, but the thing is, I turned, I changed, I changed in that room because as soon as the babies came out, I'm like, what are you still doing here, looking at me for? Will oh, you follow the them? Will you follow them? <sighs> like I turned to something else. I, I don't think because I, I watched the video, and I was like, what are you doing here? Like what are you doing with me right now? Do you know this? This has yeah. brought me to something else that I feel we should talk about <laughs> some oh, some day soon, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> this issue of DNA. Mm. And why people have problems with it. Oh, wow. I, personally, Mary. yeah. Okay, we'll talk about it when we get there. Mary, what a, what a segue. Eh? What, 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 anyway, what? still talking about this, though. <laughs> CS. Uh -huh. People need to be educated more on CS. Uh, yeah. Caesarean section is not a cosmetic procedure alone. Oh, wow. Yes, some women can choose it. Mm. There's elective CS. But it is not cosmetic. For a man to feel his wife has to pay him back, or he feels, I cannot pay for CS. Uh, my, my mother gave birth uh, through vaginal natural. delivery. So you should have your baby natural, naturally. Hello. Let's talk about when that When the woman's tomorrow, life is at we? risk. Let's, okay. let's, let's, let's talk about that tomorrow. But hey, <sighs> everything we talked about today, you have an opinion as well. So do share with us. Use the hashtag WakeUpNigeraTVC. Let's know. We'd love to read from you guys. We'll be back. And welcome again. It's time for the headlines where we get to tell you what to expect if you are to pick up a daily. I'm joined by Mary, of course, again today. Mary, you're welcome. Thank you very much. I'm Sorry, I don't have any special anecdotes today, but <laughs> welcome should do. So let's start. Let's go into the papers this morning. Um, and we're going to be starting from the Guardian newspaper. Inside of the Guardian newspaper, you will meet these headlines first up and center. Despite 2.8 trillion naira subsidy power averages, 3,000 megawatts in 10 years. Doesn't seem to be getting any better. There's a chart there with the electricity subsidy between 2015 and 2023. Thank you very much, Guardian, for always giving us these very, very go-to type information on your yeah. charts. Private sector CSOs kick as NLC decides on indefinite strike tomorrow. Wicked Whoa. gives Yugoda Lambo NCS 186 plots owners uh, ultimatum. And also Nigeria has 500,000 undocumented citizens, 8,900 professional students in South Africa. Now, that is a lot wow. of people. There's still more on the front page of the Guardian. Paris Climate Agreement, Nigeria, and uh, hypocrisy of uh, polluter countries. And the nuts in Tinubu's lofty debt servicing plan. These are some of the stories you'll find for The Guardian if you are to pick one of them up to read this you, morning. The issue of the debt servicing, though, people are really kicking about it. We, mm -hmm. we can only hope that it gets better, especially with the um, recent news of subsidy in uh, fuel again because of uh, the, the, return the, of yeah, the dollar and all. But let's take a look at the Vanguard newspaper. It says, NLC battles OPS over stand on planned nationwide strike. Now, the riders here... Uh, uh, NLC alleges plot to sabotage struggle on palliatives. Economy cannot afford nationwide strike. OPS insists, urges federal government, NLC, to avert industrial action by all means, asks federal government to demonstrate good faith in keeping promises. Pro-labor CSOs urge NLC to declare indefinite strike, pledge to support NLC in fighting for workers, others. So that's the... That's the big one, talking about the NLC strike, which is uh, scheduled to begin tomorrow. Uh, Nigeria legal experts uh, fault uh, NCAA's transfer of AOC to new owners. Kidnapping Zamfara, rescue remaining female varsity students. Tinubu orders uh, security agencies. Here we also have manufacturers incur heavy losses as forex crisis inflation mm. bites harder. Now, that's a very big one for me regarding the manufacturers because we've always been saying this since the start of the entire issue with the whole subsidy removal thing. Mm -hmm. 
the, the, the card was Nigeria produced more so we can strengthen the Naira. But mm -hmm. in the case where uh, manufacturers are the ones who are growing now, if we can't produce nothing, we can definitely not export anything. So we are not even producing for ourselves or the ability to export mm -hmm. and strengthen the Naira. Subsidy removal, perhaps maybe not put it back in petrol, yeah. maybe help manufacturers instead. Oh, That's my layman, yes. my layman, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, yeah. opinion. And so, and so you can understand how heartbreaking it was. Mm -hmm. The unfortunate fire incident at the company last uh, weekend. Yes, yes, that was Thinking of bad. what has been lost and all in this dire times, it, it's, it's insane. And then, of course, we still have uh, diphtheria kills 10 as Jigawa records uh, suspected cases. Oman abroad, Tinubu's Nigeria is taking its rightful place, coming from Mohamed Idris. Here we also have NYG 2023, Olarinoye mint three gold medals for Team Lagos in weightlifting. That's uh, commendable, as a matter of fact. Quite a number of other stories uh, in the Vanga newspaper. But we should move on to the Daily Times. Uh, I'll do Daily Trust instead. Okay. Front Center for Daily Trust, FCT. Okay. States lose trillions of naira to unpaid ground rents. FCTA owned 34 billion naira, revo uh, recovers 2 billion naira in two days. Why states are not getting around rents, uh, not getting ground rent, and defaulters risk revocation of titles, say lawyers. At the top for the Daily Trust, Boko Haram kills soldiers, five passengers in Bono Ambush. Regarding this, is the first time in the world that we've heard that tag Boko Haram, Boko Haram. in any terrorist activity that mm. has gone on inside of the nation. Why is there a, a, a resurfacing of the name or mm. of their activities? The thing that needs, that should be the center of any inquiry that's about to happen regarding this case. Now, access holding half year, um, profit rises to 52% as revenue hits 940 billion there. And Daily Trust Lead TV, Oyigba win a WAMBA political reporting award. Congratulations to you guys. Tinubu orders rescue of abducted Zamfarabasti students. It's been such a long time. And, uh, well, don't know if to say this is... Uh, I don't know if to say this is about time, but it's always been about time that they should have been rescued or they should have been priority for anybody who is in the security arm of government. Um, there is more uh, front page for the Daily Trust. We can revoke some more plots in Abuja. 168 others uh, give an ultimatum. And tribunal delivers judgment in PDP LP petitions against Sonolu today. And flood destroys 70 houses in Cross River State. People losing their houses and their properties um, due to land revocation mm. is actually something that I believe the government needs to work better on. Like Many of these uh, government agencies are supposed to give the permits, but in most cases, due to pubs being you know, greased. greased and all, we see situations where there shouldn't be any property on it uh -huh. and you give the permit and the person is presenting a permit and the government is saying no and so you're wondering i have the official permits uh -huh. what's going on uh -huh. it's an unfortunate well, situation well, what 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 is to be said about the unsuspecting buyer in any case yeah if i did not know if, if i'm just simply i need land this is available okay go through all the uh, pros processes and process and everything yeah. and then you still end up tell, being told your land is being revoked, that is going to be quite very unfortunate. So I'm thinking, instead of just revoke these lands, how about go right back to the very beginning, where it all started from, and if there's any compensation that could be given to these individuals who are losing their lands, then perhaps... Maybe. Do you know sometimes I wonder if it's possible to even move the house, you know, <laughs> elsewhere? So much on it. <laughs> because do you know what it means to watch it, and then the cost of cement now, to now yeah. start all over again elsewhere? Terrible. We'll take a very last paper this morning. Daily Independent for this morning has this okay. headline here. Um, a new AG, CBN governor, deputy's assumption of office wrong. Lawyers, economists CBN say, yeah, say it's patent illegality. Presumptuous, they say. Ah. Um, there's more on the front page for independence. Agreement, trials, extension of AOC for, N uh, for Nigerian Eagle um, Airlines as $30 million aircraft engine keep airline a ground and judges wrongly accused of delaying justice appeal court judge say. I find this interesting. Unizik dismisses two lecturers, suspends six for fraud extortion. Uh, I, I can imagine the relief the students who had to go through such lecturers are probably feeling right now. And then of course, Mobad reaped uh, reward of his actions while alive. That's uh, coming from uh, Pastor Tunde Bakari. Mm. I know a lot of talk about Mubad. Yeah, uh, may so um, rest in peace. Yeah.
Yes. Thank you very much, Mary, for joining me for the papers. Absolutely. Always a pleasure. Now let's move on to where we get more pleasure when it comes to Wake Up Nigeria. No Ooh. place than the kitchen because that's where all our food comes from. And this morning we have a very exciting chef with us. And why don't we just let Titi do us the honors of the introduction? Thank you, Mazino. Thank you, Mary. And it's all about the M, M, and then another M today, because we have Chef Me Day in the Hi, building. So when everyone. Mazino and Mary join you, it's to be M, M, M. Yes, M, M, M. You know, there's a joke somewhere in there. I'll try and find it later. Yeah. But it's great to have you, yes. Chef Me Day. Good morning, Titi. Good Welcome. Morning. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have an interesting display here in the Wake Up Nigeria kitchen. What are we making this morning? Okay, so this morning we'll be making chicken sandwiches, then... Chicken the sandwich. To, to bellow it down. Chicken sandwich, yes. yes? All right, so for the sandwich, obviously, we have the bread, yes. we have chicken... Chicken fillet. Chicken fillet, okay. Yeah. We have a, some sort of mix here. So What's this it? is a mayonnaise and salad cream. Okay. Mayonnaise. So I'll be adding a little bit of honey to it. Okay. All right. What else do we have here? Then okay. we have um, a lettuce, um, tomatoes for garnishing the. All salad. right. Fantastic. Lettuce and tomato. Um, what's this? This is a. Uh, this kind is of... um, garlic. Garlic powder. Yeah, garlic powder. So what I do is that I love originality. Mm. So ma to maintain the taste of my food. Okay. A constant thing, so I come up with my own rest, uh, my own spices. So okay. I'll be using. All the right. First thing I'll do is um. You know what? Let me just give them the ingredients okay. first of all. Someone at home might be trying to make this themselves. All right, chicken sandwich comes with, of course, sliced bread, mayonnaise, salad cream in a mix, some honey, Cameroon pepper, tomatoes, lettuce, and chicken fillet. Uh, we also have a marinade with seasoning cubes, soya spice. Uh, Mide chicken spice, ginger, garlic, and sesame oil. Yes. Fantastic. Yes. All right. So um, all these ingredients look really great. You, you make these yourself, yes? Yes, yes. You make them, you yes, process I, them? Yes, I mix them together. Wow. I have about uh, 25 different spices. 25? Yes. Goodness me, where do you find the time? Uh, 25. You know, one thing is, um, if you taste my meal today, I want you to taste it another time. Yeah. And it still tastes the same way. You'll be able okay. to say that, oh, this is midday's food. Hmm. All right, so, fantastic. Yeah. So now you have ginger here, Cameroon pepper here. Yes, so yes, spice, spice and, and chicken seasoning. Chicken seasoning. So I'm going to be using them to marinate my chicken. All right, go ahead. So, I would love to see the process, uh, especially since these are all organic, original yes. products, so, uh, and you even make the bread as well? I have a bakery, so every day we turn out fresh bread in the bakery. Amazing. So this sandwich is going to be like no other. Yes, like um, midday. Mm. Mm. All right, so what do we do first? I'm seeing the chicken. Yes. You've done some processing. No, I just added the spices. Okay. So I'm going to... Which spices are in there presently? Um, I added the chicken seasoning, okay. then the suya spice, then a little bit of cameroon pepper and... Um, Ginger. Ginger. So okay. I want to add my garlic. All right. So garlic powder now going in. Um, this is a lot of spices for a sandwich. No. I'm just you thinking. Know, um, the chicken has to be well seasoned. Okay. Because if it's not well seasoned, it's, going, it's not going to bring the taste. Okay. The proper taste you're trying to achieve, yes. obviously. Yes. All right. Fantastic. So uh, this was obviously room temperature chicken. Yes. Chicken yes. fillet. Yes, I bought it out from the fridge. Have you done this. any other thing to it so no, far, no, no, apart no, no, from no. add spices? No, not at all. So you just uh, diced it. Yes. Okay. All right. Fantastic. How many fillets did you use for this mix? How um, many is it? This is five hundred grams. Five hundred grams of yes. chicken. Yes. Right. So if you have some ordinary. Uh, chicken, chicken at home, can you still achieve the yes, same if thing? If you have ordinary chicken at home, you only have to debone it. Okay. Just debone it. So, but um, to have the best outcome, use soft chicken. All right. Yeah. Fantastic. All right. I'm just going to add a little bit of my sesame oil. Some so sesame oil yeah. going in there, very fragrant oil, I yes. have to say. Yes. And of course, this chicken is going to go straight on the heat. You don't want to miss what we have in store. Chef Mide has got us covered and it's going to be very, very tasty later on.
Hey, I'm inside of the kitchen. You guys are wondering what I'm doing. And I'm curious. I so, saw tomatoes. One thing I love about tomatoes is you can have them anyhow, anytime. Cooked, fresh, whatever. It's all good. Chef Mide, please. Yeah, sorry that I butted in on your no, segment here. I'm it's just curious. Fine. I can hear all the... Uh, here, Mazino. I can smell the aroma. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I can smell the aroma from over there. So I wanted to know exactly what's happening inside here. Uh, I see our sandwiches, or rather our sliced bread bean. Yes, um, I always like to toast my bread to give it a very crispy taste. Oh, nice. Okay. But you can actually have it without, being, without toasting it, but that is how I like mine to be done. Is this so, a cocktail? Because I can see some yes, syrup. Yes, I'm going to be doing a mocktail, oh. sunset. Oh. So that good. after the sandwich, you can have something to mellow it down. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Well, you might have covered this, but I don't know what this is. Okay, this is a, a mixture of a mayonnaise and salad cream. Then I added a, a little bit of cayenne pepper. Cayenne pepper. Okay. Yeah. Very nice. Oh, well, that's beautiful. So let, let me just watch you work here. So um, I'm done with the... I've fried my chicken. Oh, that's chicken, okay. Yeah, so I'm going to add my mix to it. Okay. I always have, like to add a little bit of honey to my mix. Oh. Honey in, okay, and then it, you're yeah. not cooking it after now? No, 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 no. Okay. I've done the cooking. Um, that's what I've done to the, okay. to the right. chicken. So are you going to put the chicken in in chunks, or are you going to shred it any further? Or is that no, 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 I'm going to put it in there. Just a soup. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. Mixing our honey in with our mayonnaise, salad sauce, and cayenne pepper. Uh, last week, I tried out one of the things the chefs did here, and my family absolutely loved wow, it. Wow, that's amazing. My, my, my <laughs> uh, favorite. Like one chef <laughs> right now. So I'm going to be trying this as well. Yeah. I'm sure they're going to love it. Okay. I leave all the cooking bits to my wife, but anything that has to do with, you know, mixing and stuff, I love it. I just mm. love it. It's like chemistry. Sort of. Hi. So that's our chicken getting... So what I do is that um, you can also have these tomatoes diced in it. In there. But there are some people they don't like tomatoes. eating raw tomatoes. So that's why I slice it. So that they can have the option of slicing it. So same thing with the lettuce. Okay, fantastic. So I'm going to use that for dressing. Fantastic. Well, these are all easy to get. Um, uh, no, if you need a very quick breakfast to fix in 10 minutes, then this is a... Good to go. But how long will it last? If I took it for lunch or carried it in for lunch now, how long will it last in my bag? Would it get Your sour bag. By, 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 by lunchtime? Do you think? Would it get wet by lunchtime? Or do you advise that I have my my paste separate and my bread separate and then eventually... If you know that you will not take it for a longer period, it's, it should be very good for you to separate them. Oh, ah, okay, okay. Or you refrigerate. All right, okay. So can you spread one already? Yeah. Let, let's just see what it's going to be like. There we go. And that's my own. That one is not going to reach the end. The <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. Listen, you can see how it. Back, stay tuned. Right. Well, of course, it's the second hour here for Wake Up Nigeria, and like we like to say here on Wake Up Nigeria, we hope you're feeling charged up already because this Monday morning is all about positivity. Yes, positive so energy. positive energy, mm. smiles, yes. happiness. No matter what's happening on the outside, we, especially on the second hour, how we kind of help make sure you're having fun. Yeah, indeed. at this time of the day. Welcome, it's Wake Up Nigeria. Absolutely, so grab a seat, or maybe just uh, you can keep running around and leave the TV set as you go about your duties in the morning. It's okay, yeah. we're here for that next one hour of greatness. Let's put it that way to make sure that you settle in every single thing for a Monday and indeed the entire week in the right places. So whether you're heading to work, maybe you are dropping your kids off at school, maybe you're just having a lazy morning, Wake Up Nigeria <laughs> is right here to guide you into an extraordinary Monday. Absolutely. Welcome back to the yeah. second hour here. My name, of course, is Mazino Appeal. And I'm and... Titilaya Oyinson, of course. Absolutely. Make sure that your goals are all set up for you the second hour because this is where you get to at least put out that unbutton as in go time mm -hmm. for a Monday. Let's get it started <laughs> again for yes. We appreciate it when you chat with us. Use our hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC. Let's see exactly what you're talking about, especially with what we've already done on the show. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people are on the go. You need to keep the energy going. Use our mobile app. It's available for you on Google Play and iOS. And if you're here with us in Nigeria, you're probably seeing us already. Go TV 16 is where you are seeing us.
this throughout the show on everywhere. Facebook, Twitter. Is, do they still call it Twitter? No, you're the only one. Who's... I still call it Twitter. I can't, I can't, <laughs> not, I don't know if I'm going to start saying it. It is next. Anyhow, we have an incredible lineup for the second hour here. Next 45 minutes is going to be inspiring. You're going to have plenty of sparkle to help your day get along. So please <laughs> do not miss one single minute. Let's already tell you what we have coming up the rest of yes, the show so here today. It's still about motivation today, right? We're still mm -hmm. going to be motivating people. Mm -hmm. But let's uh, give them the performance uh, first up. We'll be having a performance come up very, very soon. Awesome. Shop boy. Shop boy there. <laughs> then, of course, joining us to talk about personal branding in the gig economy. It's all about sharing insights on personal branding and how it can be leveraged in the context of this new economy we find ourselves in. Uh, it's about where individuals often work on short-term contracts. Isaiah Itua is going to be here. He's a motivational speaker, branding expert, and so much more. Then we have a sit-down and chat with Jumoke Edun. She's a fashion expert and a footwear connoisseur. She'll be joining us to tell us about her story or history when it comes to her business inside our SME segment. All right. Welcome back. Serves you right. What? what? Who right? What? Yeah, she, she hurt herself trying to hit me in the knee. Me? <laughs> me. Out Abi, of <laughs> you squeezed my hand trying to get my phone I out of my hand. Yes, you did. Your... Okay, See, so it's red. Children, children. It's yes, okay. Mommy. It's okay. It's all right. <laughs> Very This one. Nice. Wow. Wow. <laughs> let, let me pity wake up. Pass that one so that no, I can no, stone no, it no, out. I'll keep this to myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, honestly, uh, we were talking about something earlier. Earlier, yeah, yes. Yeah, from while we were sitting Omar. there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Omar. That was about... Living in... Living... Uh, Mother-in-law's live, house. Living in-laws in parents' house. And you guys had so much more to say. So we... What I was going to say is that if a, a man, for instance, lives in his in-laws' house, isn't there the penchant or the risk of him feeling a little bit too comfortable? Absolutely. A little bit. Just a little. So, you know... Hey, if when a, a guy is on edge, in my opinion, when a guy is on edge, he sort active. of his his mind works faster on opportunities, um, you know, trying to get gigs, trying to get work. I feel like you know he'll be more on his toes, trying to make the family move forward. Mary believes that's different. just. Let's move on now. That's to Mary. just me. No, because so my thought is this: everybody has a a, a right to soft life. Mm -hmm. uh, as in, this on is whose account? See, exactly. Look, see, the man might not worry about paying rent, uh, but it doesn't mean he doesn't have a goal for himself. Look, there's difference between a man who is like not even ambitious at all, okay. and a man who you know has a lot of ambition. It's a phase. So it's, what you are saying what is I'm that saying whether is, he's whether rent free he's, or he's paying rent, if he doesn't have ambition, he doesn't have ambition. He doesn't have ambition. Okay. You know, when I say laid back, laid back is maybe he has a job. Okay, he has certain goals he's setting for himself. The money he's saving from rent is probably also trying to buy a plot of land somewhere. You know, he has goals, okay. just not... All the right. gra gra kind of goal as you'd expect. I don't know if I can do that. Still, still don't agree yeah, I don't mind. I, I don't, I don't think mind. I can do it. Ah, but we'd love like to hear I, I like your pancreas. thoughts, though. Yeah, no. Let's know what you think. Is it okay for a man to live in his in-laws' house for an extended period extended of time? Extended period of time. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. We should probably talk about it, like, really fully one of these days. Uh -huh. We should. Welcome back. Second hour here for Wake Up Nigeria. We begin with a story from before. Now, following the expiration of a 21-day ultimatum, the Nigeria Labour Congress is set to hold an emergency National Executive Council meeting that's on Tuesday. The NLC had earlier embarked on a two-day warning strike to protest the plight and suffering of Nigerians following the removal of petrol subsidy. After the warning strike, the Labour Union gave the government a 21-day ultimatum to meet its demands. The Monday meeting between the federal government and the Nigeria Labour Congress to avert an imminent strike ended in a deadlock as the union insisted on its demands. Now, let's talk health now, where at least 10 people have died following an outbreak of 91 suspected cases of diphtheria across 14 local government areas in Jigawa State. Permanent Secretary to the State and the State's uh, Ministry of Health, Salisu Muazu, says so far two cases had been confirmed at uh, Kazore and Jahun local government areas, while some samples have been taken to Abuja for confirmation. Dr. Moazu pointed out that this outbreak is particularly concerning as it occurred in areas with a history of zero-dose routine immunization against the epidemic. They promptly notified the National Primary Health Care Development Agency and the National Center for Disease Control to coordinate further actions. 
Local communities have been advised to remain vigilant and follow directives issued by health authorities to mitigate the spread of diphtheria. And that's all for news this hour here. Let's move on now inside the kitchen where Titi's standing by with that delicious meal I see coming up. Chef Mide has been hard at work. I heard uh, Mazino popped by a little earlier on. Mm, yes. We've had some activity in the kitchen. Chef Mide has, of course, added some of her marinade to the chicken yes. earlier on. So what's the process from here on out? Okay, so after, I always like to toast my bread. Oh, okay. So after doing that, then I'll lay my dressing. Okay. Ooh, okay. For those that are just tuning in, we're making yes. chicken sandwiches. Chef Mide makes all her own spices. And she's added quite a few lovely spices in here already. So after putting my dressing, um, I'll layer in my tomatoes. Okay. What I do is that you can dice the tomato in it, but okay. some people don't like tomatoes, so you have the option of removing it if you want to. Sure. Then I put um, my lettuce. Oh, okay. You cut the lettuce? Yes, you can okay. also slice it in case you don't want it so that it's easy to remove. Then Fantastic. I had it, then put another toasted bread. Okay. And then I'll seal it okay. up, then I'll cut right. it into sandwich shape. All right, fantastic. So that is the basics of the sandwich. But we do have some drink ingredients here as well. So you said uh, earlier on that we're making a drink. Sunset. So sunset, which is like a mocktail, yes? Yes, it is a mocktail. Okay. So we have our glasses here. Let's let the sandwiches rest for a bit and show us how uh, to make this mocktail. Okay. What, basically, what you need is um, an orange juice. It could be of any type. Okay. So you put your your juice in the cup. Okay. So it's... What I always do, yeah. I put blocks in okay. it. Okay. Before, so that it can chill. Okay, that's ice, yes? Yes, Okay. Ice. All right. And put some... So we have as a, a combo there, sunset mocktail, orange juice, and syrup. And, of course, ice, if you can... Get your hands on so. so you can see that um, you can use any syrup. This is mentee. Okay. So this is the technique. It's not just pouring the syrup in it. Okay. You have to do it by the side. By the side yes. of the glass. Yes. Oh, okay. So what does that do? So it gives you a mix. Okay. So it goes straight to the bottom and then yes. uh, changes it, the color. Yeah, give it a mix. All right. So that's where we got the name, Sunset, like something. <laughs> <laughs> but you can also use uh, grenadine. Yes, that's what I'm doing. So grenadine, um, if I can remember, sometimes has a, a little bit of a bitter taste. This is what they use for Chapman sometimes, I believe. Yes, no, that's um, Angostura bitters. Oh, that's bitters. That's oh. Angostura bitters. This one is just cereal, but it's non-alcoholic. Okay, fantastic. It's basically for mocktails. All right, fantastic. So same technique? Yes, same By technique. the side? Yeah. All right. Interesting. Ooh, those look good. <laughs> they actually look really good. Yeah. All right, so that's a very nice looking sunset mocktail there. That's going to go really nice with our sandwiches. And as long as you have some ice, it's going to make a very refreshing drink yeah, as okay. well. So you might be heading out to the office. You might be heading out for a meeting and you just want to grab something quick. Hey. This might be for you. These sandwiches are coming along really nicely. I can't wait to taste them myself. Thank you so much, Chef Mide. My pleasure. At this point, we're going to be wrapping it up uh, in the kitchen. Uh, we have to take a quick break, and we'll be back with more. All right, then. Now, there's so much talent uh, in Nigeria, and sometimes I feel like not enough branding is happening around some of these talents to help showcase them better. Beautiful voice like that, lovely song like that. What could be missing? Hmm. Joining us to talk about personal branding in the gig economy and share insights on how personal branding can be leveraged in the context of this economy. Individuals often work on short-term contracts or gigs, as we call them. Aizehi Itua is in the building. He is a motivational speaker, he's a branding expert, and so much more. It's great to have you back. Thank you very much. It is good to be here. 
always have something interesting to learn uh, when you pop into the building. Thank you very much. Personal branding, most people have sort of put personal branding in the bracket of, I have an Instagram page now, mm -hmm. I'm on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. I'm on Facebook, what's next? Great. I think those platforms should be an expression of your personal branding. Okay. And by that, basic marketing, they are just channels and platforms that you then express the core of who you are. Okay. Um, I remember earlier in the month, we talked about, you know, starting from inside, yeah. you know, so, so identifying who you are and identifying where your target audience, you know, are most excited, right? And then creating plus platform specific content to fit them and express who you are on those platform is key. When you say platform specific content, are yeah. you saying that that selfie video I made for Instagram this morning might not work on every single platform? Yes, it might not. Okay. Right. While we're going video first and based on consumer, you know, um, insights over time, we see a lot of snack ads and short form content. Uh, I think that was what blew up TikTok, okay. Snapchat, and then you see other serious platforms even, you know, trying to have that as well. YouTube shots, okay. even Instagram reels okay. uh, and the likes, right? Um, however, it depends on what you're also saying. What are you communicating? Um, great. And then how you also want to position yourself within that community. Okay. Very essential. So if you are, uh, and, and the beauty of it is that, you know, uh, even the professional space is becoming less uptight. Okay. You know, we have, I was surprised the other day, I saw Snoop Dogg on LinkedIn and I was like, okay, <laughs> okay, you know, <laughs> you know, and the beauty is that he is consistent across board. However, his content are actually tailored towards businesses, sure. you know, and all of, you know, the professional side of, but then he did not lose his humor and the Snoop Dogg part of him. Interesting, know. interesting. So now I'm, I'm thinking about what um, people can do presently. Maybe yeah. a small business owner, yeah. a freelancer who is looking to make some changes. What are the platforms you need to be on? Great. Um, again, depending on your on your your industry and where you okay. play let's, let's just say fashion for instance great um for fashion you need to be on a platform where you can showcase your work funny enough you could be on linkedin yeah depending on the type of fashion you do of right instagram great um so what i try to advise startups is that you we have a new form of branding for for small businesses now and not even small businesses it's more of the ceo branding okay right when you have a ceo with high equity pushing the corporate brand you know because it is more believable when it's coming from a person people connect to people okay. you know and we saw that even with elon musk when he took over twitter it was like you know a whole lot of and his space um x so yes yeah. so it's it's him using his personal brand to push whatever you know he's speaking about because he's trusted as a thought leader so it's very essential that as a business owner your personal brand should be positioning you as a thought leader so that you can build trust well enough to leverage you know on your business so leveraging on different platforms such as linkedin such yes. as pinterest yes. such as Facebook yes. is important, Very. but then being consistent is, is challenging yes. for a lot of people, yes. especially if you don't understand how these platforms mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. So what is the best thing for someone who hasn't used these platforms before? Yes. What's the best thing for them to do? So two things. Uh, first off, if you don't have to do everything, but then if you want to cut costs, then it's essential that you plan ahead. Um, I tend to advise people to actually create multiple contents. Like I said initially, your content is an expression of your strategy, your core strategy. So I tend to recommend to you know, um, business owners to start off being ideas led. Okay. Right? I recently put up a post on LinkedIn about my friends, uh, one of the biggest um, agency, creative agencies in New York, okay. owned by two um, wonderful people, Sonny Bonnell and Ashley. And what they did was come into the scene with an idea. Okay. And it was them succeeding because of who they were, not despite, you know, who they were. And they came in with the red breed. From there, they, they are, they are, they are, their agency is called Moto, with the tagline, ideas worth rallying around. Okay. And of that, having understood and created a system for creating ideas-led brand, they created a product. That's you productizing, you know, that system, yeah. which was called Vision Camp, to help other leaders create such you know, as well. So it's you establishing yourself as a thought leader, showing your mastery, and then productizing it well, for, yeah. you know, for it. I, when, when I hear the term thought leader yes. now, uh, I think of people who have possibly written books, mm. 
people who have spoken about mm. uh, particular areas mm. or people that actually teach or train. Great. I don't really think about people that own businesses. Great. So how does that work? If someone who owns a business that's not really as popular as they make it seem yes. is teaching about it, does Great. it still work? Funny enough, it is that you have a track record and, and that's why we spoke about documentation and amplification. And that's where storytelling, you know, and amplifying that story you're telling is key. And showing that I have this skill set, I can do this, I have done this over time. Yeah. And based on the fact that I have done this over time, I think you can also do it. It's you leading a thought, influencing, okay. you know, showing, showing your expertise. So it gets to a point where even as a chef, you know, you have done it well enough to be able to nurture a couple Other of people. people. Yes. All right. And once they say, those, those who don't do, they say they teach. Mm -hmm. uh, once you mm -hmm. can teach something over and over again, I guess you're also improving on your yes, own sir. skills. Yes. This is the gig economy. Yeah. How does this now affect uh, us? Because it's, it's sort of still a fresh version of the economy we're mm -hmm. used to. Mm -hmm. People are moving from the blue collar and white collar and they're running their own businesses. Yes. How does this affect that space? Um, I think it does a whole lot. Because like we said initially, if you're not seen as an expert, you won't be trusted. And funny enough, you get to see that businesses tend to utilize these guys, the freelancers, a lot from tech to creative space and media and all of that stuff. Um, since we are in that start of mentality, we're then looking for, businesses are looking for that. You know, these guys are like, you know, briefcase agencies now okay. because, sure. you know, they, they help you cut costs and then just deliver and move on. You know, no extra, extra cost. So what you want to then do is enable your client trust you well enough. Okay. So what platforms are you on? Um, I know global platforms like Upwork, Fiverr, uh, even LinkedIn, which is yeah. professional. It is you identifying the community. Now, community for your industry and community for your target audience, sure. right? And then positioning yourself as an expert. Hey, I've done this, showcasing your work, like I said initially, okay. well enough for them to trust. So the, all I'm hearing now is don't be afraid to blow your own trumpet. Please don't. Because nobody's <laughs> going to blow it for you. <laughs> You need to talk about what you do, you need to showcase what you do, but also do it on the right platforms, at the right time, yes. in the right way. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you very much you for having me. We have loads of work to do together, honestly. Yes, I need to, I, I, man, I, you people should trust me by now. You people <laughs> should trust me. Am I not a thought leader at this point? <laughs> you know what? Uh, let's hear what you have to say. Use our hashtag WakeUpNigeria on TVC on all platforms and uh, give us your thoughts on this. We have quite a bit more coming your way. Let's take a quick break and be back. And you're welcome. It's our final segment for a Monday here. And we have a sit down and talk with Jumoke Edu. Uh, she's a fashion expert and also footwear connoisseur. She is the CEO, let's call it so, of Rani AJ. And she's joining us to tell us about her history when it comes to her business. You are welcome. Good to have you here. You got me checking my ring because uh, I had to be sure that you're married here. Okay. <laughs> Good to have you on the show. Welcome. Thank you so much. So we're going to be talking about Rani AJ, but I can't let it go. I must first ask, Rani AJ, what's that mean? It's the name of your footwear brand. However, yes. where does that name come from? Um, Rani, my name, mm. and AJ, A, stands for my mom's name. Okay. And J, also my name, Jumoke. Oh, okay. That's yeah. nice. Rani AJ. Rani's short for what, by the way? <laughs> Rani Atwaru Donwansi. That's a long one. Yes, it's a that. long one. But Rani's fine. <laughs> Thank Great. you. We've got some pictures that we're going to be showing of your footwear and your products. So uh, don't you worry, even if we don't have them on display here, you can see them already on your set. Um, so let's talk about your business. How long has it been on for? Uh, six to seven years. Six to seven years. Yes. Has it made you a millionaire yet? Amen. Amen. We're getting there. <laughs> We're getting there. Well, how's the journey been so far from when you started? Hmm. How did you get started? Where are you on your way to? What's it like now? Let's start from where uh, and when you got started. How was it starting up? Um, before I even went into that, I was learning fashion designing. Mm. So it's like quite similar. They're mm. quite similar. Like the next step. Yes. In so, fact, indeed, it is the next, next step. step. Yes. Because it's shoes. Yes. Okay. So um, I leave from the island mm -hmm. to Ikorodu mm. uh, early in the morning because I was learning at Ikorodu. Oh, There's really? a factory. Yes, I was learning at Ikorodu. So I leave very early due to time frames mm -hmm. and sometimes the traffic, BRT, 
and sometimes I pass through, you know, the keno. Mm. Oh, wow. Yes, that showed All you know, in a bit to make sure that your passion is executed. Yes. Your and everything. And that's, exactly. That takes very, very, that takes a lot of commitment. That's yes. So, yeah. so that's the beginning. Yes, that was Let's my beginning. Let's talk about how you had to invest. How much did you have to put into Rani AJ to make it come to fruition? Um, I had to put in my time, my effort, my commitment. Mm. Capital wise, we're not going. Oh, we don't want to go there. <laughs> <don't wanna> go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, but I have um, two workers that you know work for me, okay. and um, they've helped me grow mm -hmm. mm. the space of learning, and I learn every day new things. Yeah. Yes. So the first, um, I first got a store mm. and Mushi. Okay. Yeah, because that's like the central local market for mm. shoe. For the shoe industry. Yes. But as a female, you know, I had a lot of male competitors because mm. they were all males around. The products are for both female and male. Aren't yes. They? Yes. The male competition was really strong, you're saying. Yes. I was like the only female that had a store oh. in Mushi. Okay. So anytime um, they pass by, ah. Ah, Madame so Shu. <laughs> that helped your brand, didn't it? Yes, that also helped me being popular. Oh, nice. Yes, because if anybody wants to ask, oh, uh, Madame that's, Shu. you know, that's her place. So it was that's quite beautiful. easy and also productive for me mm -hmm. too. I met different types of people mm -hmm. that I mingled with. Okay, I also really learned yeah. on the spot too. Okay. That's interesting. So we're yes. going to come back and talk about marketing. But first, I want us to take a look at the products here. I want to show uh, the viewers something. Now, your shoes are, they look very, very well put together. Thank they you. look like they weren't made here. Let's face it. I can see seven years of work yeah. put into that. Thank you. But did it begin as this? And what do you have to say to anybody who's only just getting started in this business? Well, it's not easy. Nothing is easy. But you just have to be committed mm -hmm. and you just have to be passionate about what you want to do. If you don't love what you do, then... Yeah, you wouldn't, you wouldn't put out the best, would you? Exactly. Yeah. So, and you have to take risk also. Oh. It won't look, it may not look that fine from the beginning, uh -huh. but As when you... you yes. Yeah. Now, for marketing, how do you market your shoes? You were in Mushin... Are you still in Mushi? How um, exportable have your products become since then? How do you market it? Um, basically, my target audience presently are automobile companies, oh. security companies, and I also do individual, you know, female and mm. school shoes Why for do children. Why you pick that group of people to uh, make products for? Because I wanted to expand. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to only do brogues, loafers, slippers for just yes, male and female. Well. Yes. Oh. So that really paved way okay. for me. And I learned so much on the job okay. while, you know, on the job. That's very interesting. Job. You picked a niche. You yes. said this is, well, while I can do everything else, I want to also focus on this group, these groups of people. Yes. And it's going well for you. Do does everybody? Well, do most people actually think of that? And what's the importance of specifically saying that this is one area I want to focus on or get better at? What's the advantage? For what has uh, it done for you? And what could it do for anybody else interested in coming into the shoe business? Uh, visibility mm -hmm. is very important. Okay. Yes, your brand needs to be heard. Your brand needs to be known and seen. Okay. So without that, I don't know how. Mm. That's also strategies of marketing. Mm. Yes. That's so I don't know how you're going to do right. it without. So my name is Mazino Appeal, and I want to get started in the shoe business. Now, I know from listening to you that I have to go get trained in Ikorodu by boat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but perhaps maybe that's the best place I could learn, is it? Um, now, after training, and I want to start already, how do I begin? First of all, how much might I need to put in? And who do I sell to? How do I begin to build this uh, group of uh, uh, um, clients? What do you suggest I do? Okay, um, how I started, I basically sat myself down. 
and I researched what can I offer to these people? What am I doing? What is my brand going to do? Because presently, um, at first, when I started the uh, primary and secondary school mm -hmm. supply. Oh, yeah, we saw a couple of them. Yes, there. yes. And it was quite hard because I was getting a lot of news. Oh. I got just one yes. Oh, wow. Yes, and that also paved the way, but I still needed more, mm -hmm. um, more visibility. Mm -hmm. So I sat myself down and I was like, I can do safety boots mm -hmm. for automobile companies, for oil and gas. Mm -hmm. I can do that. And I know I'll walk towards my target audience. Mm -hmm. What I can do, I put in the work. I made sure I, I do everything. I market, I go and um, mm. take measurements. Sometimes, sometimes I can make, um, when I have orders, I can make, let's just say, bulky orders. Mm -hmm. I can make like um, 20 to 25. Mm. But if I'm tired, I can give the rest to my workers, you know, okay. to just finish up. Wow, I make sure I involve myself in, the, in, in the yes, production. in the production. Have whatever. You, how many yes. people have you trained and let go? And I'm I'm coming to that. Yeah, let's I'm working it. towards that. Oh, okay. Yes, I am. Okay. Presently, um, I have a store in Ikorodu. Okay. Is by boat. <laughs> By boat. <laughs> yes, by <my> boat. <laughs> Which is a good thing. Yeah. Empowering people there as well. If if you can have a store there, you employ people and everything. But you were saying you have a store in Ikorodu. Yes, and I have uh, two workers there. Okay. So. So that's where you actually put, uh, manufacture. Yes. And then you make your sales in Mushing. Yes. Fantastic, Rani AJ. Great. I mean, beautiful safety boots. School shoes, we saw a couple yes. of them, and some fashionable ones there as well. I saw yes. a couple of loafers that I'm, I regret that you didn't bring because you wouldn't have left with them if you had. But in any case, these are great. I'm looking forward to perhaps also maybe going into this kind of business, as are other people, everybody else out there who's perhaps maybe interested. Um, your handle on social media is what, so they can see more of these and also learn from your experience. What's your handle on social media? Rani AJ underscore shoes. Rani AJ underscore shoes. Is that easy? And of course, if they want to get to contact you for any learning purpose, they can always do that. Are they free to? Of course, oh, yes. That's, that's, My that's DM fantastic. is open. <laughs> that's great. Jim, okay, it's great to have you here. It's such a pleasant person Thank to be so with. Thank you so much. And your tenacity when it comes to the business by boat is... All right, and we are in the Wake Up Nigeria kitchen once yeah, again. Yeah, Mazilo has found his ring again. Like, hey, <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, <clears throat> Mide, Mary, Mazino, you know I said it when they come into the M -M -M. kitchen. M -M -M. Oh, yes, M -M -M. <laughs> not, not the bad one, not the bad one. <laughs> not the bad one, the good one. Good vibe. Yes, yeah, so, Chef Mide, thank you so much. My pleasure, my pleasure. Special chicken sandwich made from all natural ingredients. Most of the spices even yes. produced by you. Yes. Which one, which ones were produced by you again? Which ones? All. All. Which Every ones? single. Tell, tell me the name. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I, I told you I have about twenty-five different spices. Wow. But what I use today, I use the suya spice. Yeah. Chicken seasoning. Yeah. Then my my garlic and the ginger, then cayenne pepper. Hmm. All made and packaged by her. Amazing yes. stuff. Please, Jumake. Have a taste of Try this chicken out. sandwich okay. and tell us what you think. Mm. You should come on our SME segment one of these days <laughs> yes. and tell us about your Yeah, yes. please do. You really should. Mm. 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 <laughs> You're surprised, are you? <laughs> <laughs> the flavor. It shocked you. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> it's actually really good. Oh that's my fantastic. god, really good. Really good. Yeah. I know some of the like, Mide, that's <laughs> great, man. Please I can't wait to ahead. cook it myself. No so problem, I'm, Zina. I'm sure you'll love it. I'm sure I will. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Now oh, it's been a. Really, really 
a marvelous Monday, yeah. starting with Chef Me Day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I like the that famous, one. Day. The famous Monday Chef Me Day. Day. Yeah, the famous, famous Chef, Chef Me Day. Day. Yes. It's yourself. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, it's been a great way to start your week. And make sure you start it with us again tomorrow morning at 7 a.m., y'all. Right on early. Have a great day. Enjoy your week. Bye. Bye. Bye.